Hi, this is Scott Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, also known as WRTI 407. We're going to be talking a little bit more GMRS today, and I'm going to be talking about the, the CPS system, uh, customer programming system, or we, as we call it, computer programming system for the, uh, the Wushin or Wushin or Ocean KG935 Golf. And what I'm going to be talking about today is the CPS system itself and sort of uh, how I've ordered my channels and some of the uh, changes I've made to the original factory programming on this radio. So without further ado, this is the CPS. It is currently loaded on a 2008 vintage Dell computer that's running uh, Windows XP Pro. And the reason I'm doing it on this computer, this is now my computer for programming radios. And the reason for that is, I just recently did a Windows 11 update on my computer or my laptop that I use for just about everything. And uh, it wasn't until about two, three weeks later, well after the 10 day, I don't want to do this period. I found out that uh, Windows 11 no longer supports the PL2303 chip. Uh, drivers will not work. You cannot find a driver. So thus, I have now discovered that all of my programming cables do not work with my laptop. My Beofang programming cables, which by the way, the Beofang programming cable works with the 935 Golf just fine. My Yesu programming cables, they don't work. So everything now has to be done on this laptop or this uh, desktop computer right here, which pisses me off to no end. Uh, I hate Windows. I can't stand them as a company or Microsoft or whatever. I, it's it, yeah, enough of that. I, this isn't about that. So, uh, so what we have here is we've got the uh, the CPS installed on this computer. A couple of things to know about the CPS right off the bat: it's okay. It's not a particularly impressive programming um, system. It's it's not like Chirp. In that uh, one thing that I like, find very convenient about Chirp is, let's say I missed a group of channels that need to be inserted right about here to make scanning more convenient, or just the fact that I like everything to line up the way I like it to line up. If I needed to create a gap of, for instance, five channels, I could highlight this entire range of channels, hit move down five times, and make a nice little gap. This will not do that. If you suddenly decide you want to insert like four channels right here, and we'll talk about what these are in just a moment. If you uh, decide you want to do that, you're going to have to go in and rewrite the whole darn thing. So keep that in mind as you're programming this and sort of have a plan ahead of time as to how you want things set up. If you think you're going to have a particular range of channels that's going to grow over time, for instance, if you have a block of local repeaters, leave yourself some space so that you can insert more stuff in later. Now, the uh, system itself, um, okay to navigate. It's got a couple of interesting things that are actually kind of convenient. Uh, for instance, uh, when we move down to repeaters, for instance, I'll show you that real fast. So you put your, your channel, uh, or rather your frequency in here, See, you guys have already converted me now. I'm calling frequencies channels. Um, so let's say you put in 462, um, 6000, and you know there's a plus five offset. That's already indicated in here, but let me show you this. It gives you a little drop down. So if you, it'll default, for instance, up here you see, it'll default to the, the simplex transmit frequency that's identical to the receive. But here you have this nice little drop down where you can find 467, 6000 and click on it. So that's kind of neat. Uh, so you don't have to type that in. It's already there for you. Um, but getting to back to some of the fundamental changes that I've done, the first thing you'll note is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, let me click off of this for a second here. Yeah, this is, this thing is clunky. Okay. So if you have a 935 Golf, you probably know the channel one when you buy it, um, it comes programmed with GMRS-1. Well, I already know it's a GMRS radio, so that's kind of redundant information. If I had a ham radio that had GMRS channels on it, I might do that. But in this case, it's all GMRS. So I'm just going to call the channel what it is. Channel 1, Channel 2, Channel 3. Um, it's not important, but it's just something I did. Um, so I'm fully leaning into that channel thing. 
Now, the next thing you'll notice is when you get down to channel 15, and channel 15 to 22, those are going to be your high output GMRS frequencies right there, uh, the ones that most people use most often. And you'll note an extra four channels that are added onto there, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. Well, if you look over here, you'll see under CTCSS, I have send and receive CTCSS programmed for each of those. And it's the same set of four CTCSS tones used consistently throughout. And you'll see it'll, it carries over from 15 to 16 to 17. We have Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta variants of all of those. What these are is, and if you've used GMRS for any amount of time, you note right away how many FRS radios are out there being used by kids, being used by people just driving around, being used by businesses. Uh, the business use, I would say, is probably the main thing eating up a lot of a lot of frequency bandwidth. And that's because a lot of people buy these radios for use, for instance, hotels, daycare centers, restaurants. I mean, all over the place, people are using these radios. So right away, if you hit scan, you're just going to hear all kinds of nonsense. Um, now, I may even at some point go in and deselect the scan for a lot of these channels because, like I say, it gets it gets pretty tedious to listen to. But if you're in a group, uh, one thing you might want to do to make sure that you're only hearing the people that you want to hear within your group, you can set these channels up like this. It's just exactly like the privacy codes that we ran with the Motorola Talk About Radios. If you've been in radio for any amount of time, um, you've seen these and messed with these before. This is a blister pack FRS radio. And they often featured eight privacy codes in there. So you would select like channel four privacy code seven. And then you would only hear people that had the same corresponding privacy code set up on their radio. And all that is, is this right here. Just send and receive CTCSS. That's all. Um, it doesn't provide you any degree of encryption. It actually doesn't even provide you with privacy. The only privacy you get is actually discrimination. Um, and I mean that in a good sense, in that you're telling your radio that you only want to hear certain other radios. So you set these tones up for send and receive. So if a corresponding radio with the same set of tones transmits that tone, it'll unlock the squelch on your radio and you will hear that radio. So um, it's just a, a means of, you know, kind of clearing up the clutter and the nonsense that's on any particular channel and hearing just the people that are that are in your group. So uh, it's a valuable thing. And, and as I say, um, I have this program 15 to 22, same set of tones, same scheme, and the, I have the exact same scheme on all of the Beofang UV9 Golfs that I have set up. Same CTCSS as everything. It's just a minor difference with where these are in the system. And I'll talk about that when I talk about uh, Chirp and the UV9 Golf because there's a couple of real quirky things that Chirp does that you might want to be aware of so you can find out pretty quickly. It's not you, it's the, the system, it's not your computer, it's not the radio, it's the program. Uh, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, let me show you some of those gaps I was talking about. Also, here I, I retain the same, um, kind of, I guess you can call them kind of like the UV9 Golf. These are your DIY repeaters. It's just eight blank repeater sets so that you can put a CTCSS tone in. If you happen to encounter a repeater uh, on your travels and you want to interface with that repeater, you can do so. Now, whoop, there we go, clunky, clunky. Okay. Moving down here, um, we have uh, our five Tulare County repeaters. And then you'll note that gap I talked about to allow a little bit of expansion if we have more repeaters added in the county. I don't anticipate too many more, but there you go. As far as names, I just kind of go with how they're listed on uh, mygmrs.com. This one here is a new one, uh, TCRG. And what that is, is Tulare County Radio Club GMRS. This is going to be the setup when we get our repeater installed. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video a little later, giving an update on the progress on that. And everything's good to go on that. We just need uh, a new memorandum of understanding with the National Park Service, and we will be uh, ready to go. We just have to install the equipment. So, uh, But this will be the setup we'll have for that. Moving down, I've got San Luis Obispo County. That's the other set of GMRS repeaters that I mess around with. 
Uh, last week I was there, I was there last Wednesday and all of these repeaters work and they work very well. Uh, they have a really cool setup there. Of course, Rugged Radios is the one that set them up, so they uh, they should have their act together there. And then moving down, um, starting at Channel 100, I have my local public safety. Um, only thing here, although the radio will not transmit on these frequencies, I still make sure that I take the extra um, the extra step of setting transmit to off on these. Uh, it's a good good thing to do, good practice to engage in. So I've got public safety stuff there. Now the important thing. Why do I start it at 100 here? Well, I'm going to talk later about scan groups. Now, scan, well, I can talk about it real fast here. Uh, well, this radio doesn't have banks. It does have scan groups. And you've got uh, 1 to 99, 100 to 199. So basically, you got, it shows 10 scan groups here um, for a 1,000 channel radio. That The math makes sense on that. And I have, for instance, my first scan group, and you can only have two, scan group A and scan group B. Uh, scan group one is my GMRS stuff. Scan group two is my public safety stuff. And in a follow-on video, I'll show you how that actually works in actual principle. Uh, it's kind of clever, really. Uh, it actually works pretty darn good. So I'll talk about that more later. But that's kind of in a nutshell, the CPS system, and sort of the, how, the way I have my setup done. Uh, if you you know, get anything from this, fine. Like I said, this is actually not like I said, uh, I didn't say it earlier. I do through trial and error. This is, I think, about the seventh configuration that I've done. And I finally got it figured out and set up exactly the way I want it. Um, so this will probably be the, the way going forward. And I'll just add on to this. Um, about the only thing I'll probably be adding is in other areas that I travel, I'll add some additional public safety. Uh, capability for monitoring and I'll probably add some more repeaters in other counties but that's sort of about it pretty easy system to use be nice if chirp had uh, had their setup and as I hear heard a hot rumor the other day there is somebody working on a, uh, a chirp application for this so fingers crossed if uh, chirp starts working on this I will do another video and show you how to do chirp with this so with that I, I I've talked on enough. I'll bring it to a close. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day. This is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, and WRTI 407 in Southwest Visalia, California. Take it easy.